Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see Siddiquen, Juanita, John, Jafina, and Aradna. Thank you for joining class. Uh, hope all of you are doing well. Yes, no. Okay. Jafina, you don't have your video on today. Okay. I'm just yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, so can we begin with a word of prayer? Can I ask uh, Aradna to lead us in prayer, please? Good morning, Aradna. Can you lead us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your grace and mercy in our life, Lord. Lord, as we join, Lord, help us to, to remember all your words, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us, guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Aradha. Okay, so... Uh... Last week, we were uh, looking at, uh, we were studying chapter four, Kingdom Thinking. And, um, you know, we saw that um, a lot of what Jesus taught us was about Kingdom Thinking. And we looked at a few highlights of uh, Kingdom Thinking and what it is like in chapter four. And, um, and from Jesus' teachings, we saw, you know, how he wanted us to think as uh, people who are the heirs of his kingdom, who belong to his kingdom, who are here to extend his kingdom here on earth. Okay, so we saw that we need to develop a kingdom mindset, um, a kingdom framework from which we look at things, from which we need to perceive things, uh, from which we need to make decisions and uh, we saw that if we are able to think with the kingdom perspective and kingdom mindset, uh, mindset with the kingdom, um, uh, you know, and we develop a kingdom mindset, we think from a kingdom perspective, then we will truly be a kingdom community uh, where we will have a kingdom culture uh, amongst us. Okay, so we'll move on from kingdom thinking now. You know, uh, our thoughts become. Uh, what we see become our thoughts, our thoughts become our uh, actions, um, our actions become our character, it becomes who we are. Um, so we'll move on from kingdom thinking to kingdom um, uh, living, kingdom lifestyle, and then we will see how, you know, what we learned about kingdom thinking and about kingdom living, how it translates into a kingdom culture and what is the importance of uh, having a kingdom culture uh, which is having a kingdom uh, thinking and a kingdom uh, living okay kingdom mindset and a kingdom lifestyle we uh, we began uh, looking at chapter 5 um, last week we just touched on a few points we just did the introduction but i will just uh, you know go through what i have said uh, uh, in the last class uh, we read in John chapter 18, verse 36, um, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So when we are born again, we are born again to, into the kingdom of God. Uh, we are part of the kingdom of heaven. So we belong to a culture, a lifestyle, a thought process and values of the kingdom of God. Uh, so as people who belong to the kingdom of God, our lifestyle is very different. Okay, it's a kingdom lifestyle and it's called kingdom living. So we belong to the kingdom of God and hence we adopt that kingdom culture, that kingdom lifestyle. And uh, this kingdom lifestyle is called kingdom living. So as citizens of the kingdom of God, uh, our kingdom lifestyle is very different from that of the world because we don't belong to the world. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this 
world. And hence, when we are born again, we are born again to the kingdom of God. And hence, we do not belong to the kingdom of this world, but we belong to um, the kingdom of God. And hence, our um, lifestyle is different from the of the of the kingdom of this world because our uh, our lifestyle is the kingdom lifestyle. Now, in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 to 21, I'm just, uh, you know, reiterating all what I said last week. Um, in June, uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, Jesus says, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Okay, he said that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Now, why does Jesus make this statement? He makes this statement in the context when um, he was asked by the Pharisees, uh, when the kingdom of God would come, and then he makes this statement. So the, we know the Pharisees, the Jews, were basically looking uh, for a kingdom to come, a king to come who would uh, establish a physical kingdom, a physical government, and uh, will overthrow all the enemies of the Jews, especially the Romans, because they were um, greatly persecuted and troubled by the Romans. Um, so they were asking for a sign. Okay. And Jesus said that the kingdom of God does not come by observations, which means Jesus says it's not the externals that you should be looking for uh, because the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within us. So Jesus is making a statement here. Uh, he's saying that the kingdom of God is not of the externals. It's, it's something that works within us. So as believers, we need to understand that the kingdom of God is within uh, each one of us. So everywhere we go, uh, you know, we carry the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is within us. Uh, and we're carrying, so because the kingdom of God is within us and we're carrying this kingdom everywhere, which means we're carrying the authority, uh, we're carrying the dominion, we're carrying all of the life, the fullness of the king who is within us. Now, the kingdom of God we learned in chapter 1 is a spiritual kingdom, and it's a kingdom that comes from within us. So the kingdom lifestyle or our kingdom living is the outworking of the kingdom of God that is within us because we have the kingdom of God within us. So it's the outworking, our kingdom lifestyle or our kingdom living is an outworking of the kingdom of God that is inside us. And the kingdom of God inside us, you know, it affects our lifestyle. It affects the way we live. And we also saw it affects our um, thinking, our mindsets, our perspective. Uh, we will also see how it uh, affects our culture in the next lesson. Okay. So what are the characteristics of kingdom uh, lifestyle? Now, um, you know, uh, just a few things is uh, holiness and reverence. Uh, righteousness, peace and joy, power, authority and dominion, uh, endurance and suffering, forgiveness, no partiality, no partiality, readiness for the king and celibate, being celibate for the kingdom's sake. Okay, so these are a few of the characteristics that uh, are part of kingdom lifestyle. Uh, now, we've just put, uh, you know, a few things we can add on to the list uh, that can describe kingdom lifestyle, but we will just highlight a few uh, in this lesson and then we'll move on, okay? Uh, and last week we also saw, we read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 uh, to 18, and I explained that, but just to uh, recap what... Uh, uh, we looked at in um, we, what we read in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. Uh, Paul is here contrasting the kingdom of God, the people of the kingdom of God with the people of the kingdom of the world. So the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of this world. Okay. So as believers, Paul is saying that we have no communion or fellowship with uh, darkness. And... Um, I also said, uh, mentioned about John chapter 3, verses 19 to 21, where John says, you know, um, men like darkness rather than light, which means that men prefer to stay in the darkness uh, so that their wrong deeds are not uh, exposed, uh, which means that the world around us is in perfect darkness. Uh, they pref prefer doing things in darkness. Uh, but you and I as 
people of the kingdom of God, as people of the kingdom of light, uh, even as we are among these people who are dwelling in darkness, uh, you know, we need to make an impact. Okay, so we belong to the kingdom of light, but um, we are this light in the midst of this darkness, which is all around us, where there's evil. Uh, and the people of this world, you know, they don't see the light that is in us. Um, then, you know, we are absolutely making no difference. Then we need to ask ourselves this question, are we really living the way uh, God wants us to live? Are we really thinking the kingdom? um thoughts uh have we are having a kingdom mindset a kingdom perspective um you know is our kingdom uh, is our lifestyle a kingdom lifestyle or is it the way of the world uh because if you're not going to make a difference because we are light and light has to make a difference because if there's a if uh, there's darkness in the room and if uh, the light steps in or comes in you know it makes a huge difference uh so if you're not making a difference then we need to ask our a question you know are we living uh, our lives the way god wants us to uh, live okay um, and god said that uh, we are light and you know we cannot fellowship or commune have communion with darkness that means we cannot mean we are in the uh, uh, you know we belong to this world but we are off this world we don't mingle with the people of this world or we don't indulge in the lifestyle in the thinking process the thought process of this uh, world okay so um it's a good intention uh, to uh, be with people um, of darkness people around us but the good intention is to influence them uh, to reach out to them so that they also you know become part of the kingdom of light they also become part of the kingdom of um, god but you know if we end up compromising the way we live uh, the way we think uh, the way we behave and act then we end up losing the light uh, and then we are not pleasing our heavenly uh, father. Okay. And um, this is where we stopped uh, last week. Um, we'll continue now. Uh, and we see that Paul, you know, addresses this about this to the believers uh, in his letters uh, to the churches at Corinth, Galatia, and uh, at the, at the churches at Ephesus. Um, now uh, we will read First Corinthians six nine to ten, um, Galatians five nineteen to twenty one, and Ephesians chapter five verses three to five. Uh, so in all of these letters, we see uh, you know Paul, uh, who's writing the church at churches at Corinth, Galatia, and Ephesus. Um, you know, um, uh, we see Paul uh, was so strong in his understanding of the kingdom of God. And we also see that he was so strong in his understanding of uh, who could inherit the kingdom of God. So in these three passages, which I just mentioned, uh, you know, Paul is very clearly indicating in these passages that a sinful lifestyle is unacceptable before God. Okay. And this sinful lifestyle will prevent our entrance or our experience of the kingdom of God. Now, in these uh, verses, uh, in these three um, uh, references which I mentioned, uh, Paul lists several things which he calls the work of the flesh. And Paul says, don't fool yourself. You know, if you continue to live in unrighteous deeds, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so if you look at your notes, uh, the PDF, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, uh, Galatians 5 19 to 21 and Ephesians 5 3 to 5 it's talking about uh, you know the works of the flesh and uh, he and Paul starts off in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 he says uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God so don't deceive yourselves don't be fooled you know if you continue living in unrighteous deeds in unrighteous ways in unrighteous living and lifestyle you will not inherit the kingdom of god and then he lists out what are uh, the unrighteous deeds uh, in first uh, corinthians 6 9 uh, to 10 he talks about idolatry fornication uh, adultery homosexuals sodomites thieves covetous 
people, those who are drunkards, um, extortioners. And he says that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he also writes to the churches at Galatia, uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Again, he talks about the work uh, works of the flesh. And there he talks about, again, the same things. And he mentions, uh, you know, uncleanness, lewdness, uh, sorcery, jealousy, uh, you know, outbursts of uh, uh, wrath, anger, uh, selfish ambitions, um, uh, dissensions, envy, drunkenness. And he says that um, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. So we need to, uh, you know, uh, watch our own lives. You know, uh, are we indulging in idolatry, uh, you know, which is... Uh, uh, you know, are we keeping anything else in the place of God, which is idolatry, uh, or are we uh, in into adultery, or you know, drunkenness, covetousness, uh, even outbursts of anger and wrath, or selfish ambition, jealousy, hatred? You know, we might think all these like hatred and you know, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions. Uh, you know, it's okay since compared to adultery, compared to fornication, or uh, compared to, um, you know, a sorcery and things like that, um, you know, or even drunk, you know, even drunkenness. But uh, Paul mentions these in the list of the things of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. And he says, those who practice such things, or those who are continuously indulging in such things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then he also talks about the same, uh, you know, works of the flesh to the churches at Ephes uh, Ephesus in Ephesians chapter uh, 5, verses 3 to 5. And, uh, you know, he uh, mentions the same things that I mean, that uh, he is, which I've already mentioned in the Galatians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But li I like to bring to your notice, he talks about, uh, you know, foolish talking and coarse jesting or coarse joking which are not fitting okay so sometimes we can you know um, you know talk foolishly or you know constantly uh, make some you know keep uh, making some unclean foolish uh, jokes which you know everyone might enjoy it and laugh but it says that you know uh, such um, who indulge in such things uh, who practice such things have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and uh, God okay so we need to, uh, it's good to look at this uh, list uh, mentioned in these three uh, passages uh, to see if uh, we are, you know, practicing any such things. And if we are, you know, uh, we can um, ask God for forgiveness, uh, repent, and uh, so that, you know, we will be people who inherit the kingdom of uh, God. So Paul is telling the believers, you know, uh, uh, in these verses that I know you are saved by grace. Okay. Um, uh, we are saved by grace and not by works. But Paul is saying, I know that. But what I'm telling you is you cannot practice these things. Okay. Because these things are not part of the kingdom lifestyle. It's not part of the kingdom living. And he says, if you practice these things, uh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when we read all of these things, we can say, uh, you know, uh, hey, we are saved by uh, grace and not by uh, good works or a holy life. Uh, yes, that's true. You know, we are saved by grace uh, uh, and not by our works. Uh, but, you know, we manifest good works. We manifest a holy life because we are saved. So uh, the outcome of uh, our uh, receiving salvation, uh, you know, which happens inside is something that translates outside and it's seen outside by our good works that we do and our holy living. So we can, um, so yes, holy works and good living is important because it manifests um, oh, that we are uh, the work of salvation in our lives. It shows that we are saved. So salvation and sanctification go together. Okay, salvation 
is when we are born again, sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit that begins the moment, the minute that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us, cleanses us, purifies us, makes us more like Jesus. So we see that salvation and sanctification, uh, sanctification uh, go to together uh, and salvation affects sanctification in the life of the uh, individual so the outcome of our salvation is good works is living a holy life so we are saved by grace through faith and not by works but yet the bible states that if we practice unrighteous deeds if we practice um, or indulge in the carnal nature in the fleshly nature we will have no part in the kingdom of god uh, and then we can ask this question, okay, uh, then what role does grace of God have in our life? You know, we are saved by grace uh, through faith and not by works. Then what role does uh, the grace of God have in our life? So let's look at um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Uh, I hope all of you are with me. Um, can somebody read uh, Hebrews 12, verse 28? Am I too fast? Are all of you following me? Okay, thank you, Anita. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Um. Thank you, Jeffina. So here it says, let us have grace, which means let us receive and appropriate the grace by which we can serve God. He says, let us have grace by which we may serve God, which means let us have grace means let us receive. Yes, God has given us the grace. Let us receive that grace. Let us appropriate that grace by which we can serve God. And then it says here that uh, the grace of God leads to reverence and godly fear. Okay, that's so beautiful. Uh, the writer of Hebrews is saying that uh, the grace of God that we have received, uh, which is a gift from God, you know, it. what does it lead to? It leads to reverence to God. It leads to reverence in the way we live, the way we think, the way we behave, our attitudes. And it also leads to godly fear. So godly fear would only lead us to greater levels of reverence and the fear of God in our life. So if we say that, you know, we have the grace of God in our lives, and uh, and if uh, we are you know uh, living according to the flesh and, and indulging in the passions and the desires of this world then it's not the grace of god surely it's not the grace of god okay because the grace of god helps us or the grace of god enables us to live kingdom lifestyle it enables us as this word say, as this verse says to live with reverence and godly Fear. So the grace of God helps us to move further and deeper into how, you know, uh, God wants us to live our uh, lives, okay? So that is uh, the first characteristic that uh, we looked at, holiness and uh, reverence. So uh, one of the characteristics of kingdom lifestyle is holiness and reverence. And if we say that we belong to the kingdom of light, we belong to the kingdom of God, then we need to live, uh, you know, in holiness and reverence towards God. And it shows in the, uh, the life that we live. We look at another characteristic of uh, kingdom living, uh, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. You know, I, I, you know, as Sunday school children, we all learned the song, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Okay, so uh, something that we learned as children. But here, you know, Paul is using righteousness, peace, and joy in a, in a, in a, in a different context. Uh, in Romans chapter 14, verses uh, 16 to 19, um, here Paul is addressing the subject of food and meat. Uh, he's actually saying what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat. And um, 
he sums up his instruction by teaching us that uh, as part of kingdom living, uh, we do not do these things, uh, you know, we, we do not eat meat or we do not, uh, uh, you know, uh, eat some food that becomes that be an offense or a stumbling block or a hindrance to the faith of another believer or a new believer who comes into the uh, church. So let's look at Romans chapter 14 verses 16 to 19. Can somebody read that please? Romans 14, 16 to 19. Romans chapter 14, verses 16 to 19. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify other, another. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. The kingdom of God, Paul says, is not about what we eat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's right standing before God and man. It's peace and joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying that if you pursue righteousness, peace and joy, if you pursue these things, you will be accepted by God and you will also get the approval of man. So as people belonging to the kingdom, we are called to pursue the higher things of the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. And if need be, you know, uh, to pursue these higher things, if need be, we need to sacrifice some of our legitimate rights, some of our lawful rights, some of the rights that, you know, is, 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 is okay for us. We need to sometimes even sacrifice that uh, to what we eat and drink in order to pursue what promotes righteousness, peace, and joy. So Paul uh, is in this context saying that if he eats something that causes his brother to stumble, then you know he might as well not eat it. He will just give it up because even though it's a legitimate right for him to eat it and it's, it's being a hindrance, it's being a stumbling block to his brother uh, in his faith, in his believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then Paul is saying, I will just give it up. Why? Because he's saying for him, righteousness, peace and joy is more important than what, you know, he can eat or drink. And that is the kingdom of God. So what is Paul saying here? And, you know, we may have some legitimate rights of what we can eat. And if we extend that to, you know, also to what we can do and what we cannot do and how we can live. Uh, but if you're pursuing the kingdom of God uh, and you're pursuing... Um, you know, um, uh, righteousness, peace, and joy, uh, you know, you will be willing to give up all of these things because, you know, all of these, uh, uh, but because you're pursuing righteousness, peace, and joy that will edify those around you and will extend the kingdom of God. And, you know, that is how we need to live as a kingdom uh, people as kingdom persons okay because as kingdom people um, you know you need to pursue something that is higher which is righteousness uh, peace and um, joy okay so we can say that you know uh, we can do certain things uh, you know uh, we can do certain things because everybody else is doing maybe you know um, uh, you working in a in a corporate where you know you go for parties and you know everybody drinks um, and you also you know uh, do it you said everybody is doing it so it's okay or uh, everybody is um, you know uh, 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 lying in to get their work done, uh, you know, everybody is um, pulling down others so that they can climb up the ladder of success. Uh, and you can say it's okay for us to do it, but we need to remember that uh, uh, that the kingdom of God is in us. And God says uh, the kingdom is not about what you can do and not do, but it is about pursuing righteousness, peace, and uh, joy. And if you do that, you know, you will get God's approval and the approval of man. Uh, uh, and that is what is the kingdom of God. Now, you know, for example, uh, just to give you a couple of examples, uh, you know, um, uh, say a, a brother or sister at church is constantly slandering or gossiping about you and you know and uh, you know uh, it's causing a, a, a lot of problem and you're sensing that you know but 
uh, you can react in uh, you know uh, and you know uh, talking about that person as well to others uh, confronting that person you know getting back at that person uh, teaching that person a lesson but just to maintain the peace maintain the unity in the kingdom of God, you know, uh, you just say, God, you know, this is something that I can't fight because if this is something that I fight against, it's going to basically divide the team. It's going to bring in disunity. It's going to make a mess of things. And uh, God, I just want you to handle this your way because this is your church. This is your um, uh, feel. This is your vineyard, you know, um, and I'm just, uh, you know, uh, you're, uh, you know, just being a good steward of what you've entrusted to me. And you're saying, God, you just work. And, you know, when God works, he does it in such a neat way that it will not kind of uh, bring about any kind of uh, disunity, division, mess, confusion, uh, hatred and anger. He will just remove things, remove people uh, very neatly. So we don't fight our battles in those areas. Uh, we use uh, wisdom. Uh, we just let God judge. We just got let uh, God fight our uh, battles. Okay. But at the same time that we don't let people walk all over us, uh, we need to be smart. We need to be diligent. Um, and, you know, God will fight our uh, battles for us. So just for the sake of unity, sometimes, you know, just even forgiving um, a brother or sister in uh, in Christ, in our family, our spouse, our children, or uh, our relatives, you know, our parents, or uh, people at church, or in our in our in our teams that we work along with, you know, uh, just forgiving them, just letting go of what they have done. They might have done things really to hurt us, uh, to put us down, you know. But God is the one who uh, you know gives honor and um, lifts us up, you know, uh, gives us promotion, and so we just let it go to God. But what we do is we just forgive them, you know. Um, and why? Because we're looking at pursuing peace. Uh, that's the kingdom of God, peace in the kingdom of God, unity, uh, so that there is joy, there is a oneness. And, uh, you know, we don't lose our right standing with God when we are fighting back and we're uh, doing things what the world does, you know, getting back and, you know, talking back at them, pulling them down and things like that. I'll just give you another example. You know, uh, when we go to North India, you know, uh, to minister in North India, uh, in our churches here in Bangalore, it's okay when we go up uh, to preach, uh, you know, we can wear, uh, uh, you know, formal pants and uh, uh, trousers or uh, a formal shirt and, uh, you know, we can wear our shoes on and we can preach. But when we go to North India, you know, uh, we basically have to wear our salwar kameez and we have to put the dupatta and you know, sometimes we need to cover our head. And when we go up on stage, we don't wear footwear. Now, when we go to minister in our outreach churches uh, in North India, uh, you know, uh, we can say, man, you know, they have to learn our culture, our lifestyle, and all of the outward expressions is not something that is going to bring us salvation. Uh, but if I do that, then, you know, I'm kind of being a hindrance to believers to receive, uh, you know, what I'm going there to minister because they're not going to receive from me. They're going to say, okay, okay, this one is, uh, you know, as it is, she's a lady and we don't, uh, you know, we don't listen to lady preachers or pastors um, and she looks so young and look at her where she's, where she's dressed so worldly, uh, you know, uh, and it, it'll be a hindrance for them to receive the gospel. So what do we do? We uh, just to maintain that unity, just to maintain the peace and to have the joy and for, a, for us to be able to, uh, you know, impart the word and minister to them, for them to receive the word from us, we become like them. So we wear salva kameez, we, you know, we take a dupatta, we cover our head and we don't wear footwear when we go up on the podium to preach the gospel. And we minister to them in the way, in the culture that they feel best uh, to receive the word of um, God. So we, you know, give up certain things which are our legitimate rights uh, just because we want to pursue the higher things of God, that is righteousness, peace, and uh, joy. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next characteristic of kingdom living, which is authority, power, and dominion. Uh, we look at um, uh, this in a, 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 a in a uh, you know chapter which we will be looking at in the future. But for now, you know, the kingdom of God uh, uh, in us supersedes everything around us. Okay. Uh, 
because the king of the kingdom is in us and he has given us the authority uh, in our lives as believers. He has uh, given us his the power and the authority and that power and authority that he has vested upon us is in us. So wherever we go, um, the kingdom of God shows out through us. So we have, because we have the power of God, the authority of God uh, in us, you know, we have the potential to dominate uh, situations uh, around us, okay? Because we carry the kingdom of God. So we don't let the, uh, the challenges, we don't let the situations and the difficulties around us to overwhelm us, to drown us, to depress us. But we are given the power to dominate over those situations that are around us. So um, if you allow the kingdom of God that is within you to come out, uh, and to administer and minister the authority of the kingdom, then you will see you will be able to dominate the kingdom situations. Uh, you you'll be able to dominate the situations around you. Now, for example, if there is a lot of hatred, uh, disunity, uh, you know, in your home or in your work culture, on the or uh, you know, um, uh, or in your team then you don't um, let that, you know, uh, drown you. But as a kingdom of God, person who's carrying the kingdom of God within you, you have, <clears throat> sorry, you have the authority and the power uh, to break down uh, whatever it is, it's whether it's jealousy, hatred, um, whether it is disunity uh, in your situation, in your home, uh, in your workplace, um, you don't let that, you know, overwhelm you and drown you, but you dominate uh, the situation. If there's uh, uncleanness, if there is, uh, uh, you know, if there is um, uh, bribes that's going on, if there is um, the work culture, the work ethics is so evil uh, and God has placed you there, then you carry the kingdom of God in you and you have the authority to dominate the, uh, the situation that is around you. So also in church, you know, um, we carry the kingdom of God within us. So every time we meet, you know, uh, the authority and power of God that we carry needs to be manifested in terms of signs, miracles and wonders. Okay. Uh, so this kingdom that we carry in us is a kingdom of power, authority and dominion. And we need to exercise that. We need to speak that, whether it's about our health, our finances, our behavior of our children, uh, our relationships, whether there is disunity, whether there is lack, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, we need to dominate those situations in the sense we, uh, you know, speak the word of God. We uh, declare the authority and the power of God over the situations and not let the situations of hatred and whatever it is uh, to <clears throat> overwhelm our lives and our um uh, you know, situation that we are living in. Now, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20, but we will look just as at, at verse 20, it says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So the kingdom of God, uh, what Paul is saying, is not just about nice words, okay? Uh, we can preach uh, great, uh, good sermons. Uh, we can sway the people. Uh, you know that that anyone can do. Whether it's a politician, whether it is a, uh, you know, um, uh, a person who is, uh, you know, very good at talking, who influence the crowd, who change their thinking mindsets. The people of the world can even do that with their nice words, with their eloquence, with their uh, uh, logical reasoning and thinking. They can present things even. Uh, so-called, uh, you know, um, self-made gurus and uh, uh, so-called, uh, uh, you know, uh, demigods that are there, you know, uh, cult groups. So they also can speak nice words, philosophies that can sway people, that can win the crowds. But, you know, uh, Paul is saying that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power, which means that when the word of God goes, it goes with such power and authority that it destroys the work of the devil. It dominates the works of darkness. Uh, it undoes or un, uh, you know, it puts down uh, or brings down to its knees sickness and uh, disease. So uh, the kingdom of God is a kingdom that totally removes the power of uh, 
darkness. So if we are carrying the kingdom of God within us, we need to be mindful of what we are carrying. We're not just carrying, uh, we're just not carrying a kingdom that we belong to, but we're carrying a kingdom that is uh, that we are vested with authority and power. And this authority and power, uh, you know, we need to use to change our situations and our circumstances around us and also to undo or to destroy the work of the devil because the kingdom of uh, light dominates the, the kingdom of darkness. It undoes the powers of darkness. It undoes sickness and disease and uh, any kind of uncleanness unclean spirits that we read in in Ephesians and Galatians and uh, Corinthians first Corinthians chapter 6 and Galatians chapter 5 you know it can undo all of those unclean um, uh, uh, things the works of the flesh so it totally can remove the powers of um, darkness because when Jesus you know when he was talking about the kingdom he said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 28 Jesus said if I by the power of God cast out demons then the kingdom of God has come upon you so Jesus told his disciples that the kingdom of God in the kingdom of heaven um, in uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 and 8 I just read Matthew chapter 12 verse 28 where Jesus says uh, you know if I by the power of God cast out demons then the kingdom of God has come upon you okay and in Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 and 8 Jesus tells his disciples the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely so this is the kingdom that we are talking about. What is the kingdom that we are talking about? Uh, it's not just a kingdom that, you know, we'll be happy that we're going to heaven, we are living eternally. Uh, but it's a, 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 a kingdom where we are no longer slaves of uh, sin and Satan uh, and death, but we are sons and daughters of God, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ Jesus. But actually we are talking about a kingdom of power. Okay, that's why Jesus, uh, that's why God told uh, Adam and Eve, you know, subdue, uh, when he created them, put them in the garden, subdue and dominate, uh, have dominion, rule. Okay, so, uh, and Jesus tells his disciples again in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, he says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means the kingdom of God is here. It's in, within reach. Uh, it's something that you can see. And when is it at hand? When is it within reach? When is it that you can see it? physically in our natural world even though it's a spiritual kingdom is when you heal the sick when you cleanse the lepers you raise the dead cast out demons uh, and says freely you have received freely gives you receive it by grace and give it out freely so you know this should be our um our kingdom thinking our kingdom mindset and perspective saying god you know the kingdom of god is within me and it's a kingdom uh, of power it's a kingdom of authority and i want it to be translated out into my life in the way that i live in my actions in my thoughts in my reactions and god uh, all these uh, years of my life i've been living in certain you know facets or areas of my life where i've let uh, the things of this world or the things of uh, uh, the devil dominate me uh, have a control over my life whether it's fear whether it's hatred bitterness uh, you know, outbursts of anger, jealousy, uh, whatever. And you're saying, God, you know, uh, today, even as I learned that the kingdom of God is a kingdom of righteousness, peace and joy. It's a kingdom which dominates uh, everything around me because it's a kingdom of uh, power that you have vested in and authority that you vested in me. But I want to use this power that you have vested in me uh, to dominate over the things of this world. So take, you know, a couple of minutes after we finish this, uh, do you finish that last so Think about what are the situations that dominate you, has dominated you all these years, whether it's mindsets, you know, lies of the enemy that you've believed, depression or, uh, you know, suicidal tendencies or, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, you've been living in constant fear or in constant uh, failure or uh, you, you know, believe that things are not going to change in your life for the good. You know, um, you're saying, God, I'm going to take authority now and I'm going to speak 
uh, to my situations. I'm going to speak to my uh, to my situations. And the God, the power and authority that you've given to me is going to break the works of the uh, enemy. And you're saying, God, even as you've uh, said that the kingdom of God is at hand, it's within me. And, you know, the kingdom of God has come upon me when you cast out demons. And you said that, you know, I can do greater things than what you have done. Um, God, I just want to step out uh, uh, by faith. Okay, I want to do what you have uh, uh, said. I want this to become, uh, I want my life uh, to have a kingdom lifestyle where I am just uh, dominating situations around, not in the wrong way, dominating in, in terms of, uh, you know, exercising uh uh you know authority and power not in the right way but in humility um but you know dominating the wrong the situations that are overwhelming us and also you know moving in mighty signs miracles and wonders so even as we're looking at these things you know it's not something that we're just going to be reading but we're talking about kingdom lifestyle and we belong to a kingdom and so we need to you know start imbibing or start uh making these things our way of thinking our lifestyle we'll be looking at culture so we will be also looking at uh, how we can imbibe the kingdom culture in our um, lives okay um, so another important aspect of kingdom lifestyle is endurance and um, uh, suffering okay now uh, we need to come to this understanding that as kingdom of god citizens or kingdom of heaven citizens we are ambassadors of jesus christ uh, which means we are, uh, you know, we we, we are totally uh, of a different environment. We belong to a different culture, a different world. We don't belong to this world. You know, we are here in foreign territory. That's why we are called ambassadors of Jesus Christ, because we're here in a foreign territory, which means we are, uh, you know, we are in this world um, representing the kingdom of heaven. We don't belong to this world. We belong to another world. We belong to the kingdom of heaven, but we are ambassadors here in this world of uh, the kingdom that we belong, the kingdom culture and the kingdom lifestyle, kingdom thinking that we belong of another world uh, that is of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. Um, and hence we are ambassadors here in this world for uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, you know, the word of God says that, you know, we will, because we don't belong to this world, we belong to another world, we belong to another foreign ter territory, we're just ambassadors here. We will face persecution, we will face uh, pressure, uh, you know, but we will have to endure some of these things here on earth. It's part of kingdom lifestyle. It's part of kingdom uh, living. You know, sometimes we uh, we think that, you know, uh, belonging to the kingdom of God, we are children of God, and hence everything is going to be easy. Uh, you know, it's, things are not going to be difficult. Life is going to be like, uh, you know, a real uh, beautiful cruise for us. We just cruise through life easily. Uh, yes, you know, in certain ways, it is going to be easy. Uh, but God said, and God, yes, God said we are uh, his children, but he did not say that we would not suffer. Okay, He did not say that uh, we won't need endurance. He did not say that we won't be persecuted. You know, we will go through difficult situations. We will go through challenging circumstances that will overwhelm us, uh, which, uh, you know, at times we did not create for ourselves um uh, you know which other people created uh, for us and you may say god why is this happening to me you know but you know all this is part of being part of the kingdom uh, uh of of god it's it's part of being ambassadors of jesus christ in this foreign territory that we're living which is the world so part of kingdom lifestyle is um you know, uh, is having endurance, is having the willingness to go through uh, suffering, willingness to go through some hard times, hardships, and enduring and persevering. And all this is part of uh, kingdom uh, living. One verse that I would like to bring to your attention is in Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses uh, 4 and 5. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Uh, where Paul says, um, uh, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. 
you know, Paul is telling the church at Thessalonica, he's saying, you know, uh, we've actually heard about your, uh, you know, persecutions, tribulations, the sufferings that you're going through. But in spite of all that persecution, tribulations and hardships that you're going through, we've heard also of your great patience and faith and your endurance. And we're boasting about you to the other churches. And so Paul is telling the believers that, you know, we've heard that you're going through a really uh, tough time. We've but we heard that you have great patience and faith and endurance in going through this hard time. But he's also saying that, uh, but, you know, he's telling the church at Thessalonica, this is how I look at things. You know, going through troubles, hardships and endurance is an evidence that you belong to the kingdom of God. Okay. So one way you know whether you are really belonging to the kingdom of God is when you go through persecutions, uh, troubles, afflictions and uh, difficulties in life okay okay we'll stop here we'll uh, take a break now um, and we'll be back after the break so if you have any questions um, we will answer those questions after the break okay thank you <music> 